Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, today I have a product to show you. It is the DNA mask. A viewer reached out and asked whether I'd be interested in taking a look at this mask, so if you want to see my full review, just keep watching. Yeah, so somebody put a question in the comment section of one of my videos asking me to look at DNA masks. I'm going to try to get a close-up of their little logo there. So first of all, if you peruse their website, and I'm going to link it down below, there's lots of information tabs and even some videos, and it looks like the designer of this mask is a fellow nurse anesthetist just like me, so I was really excited to see that. DNA masks come in so many different fun colors, I almost kind of didn't take it seriously when I first perused the website. It just kind of looked like it was something that caters to tastes and fun, which is all great, uh, but as it turns out, it's a pretty serious mask. So the DNA masks are fabric masks. So for those of you who aren't familiar, I have a mask continuum where I put masks anywhere along from on one end of the extreme continuum is the high-tech textile masks, which really aren't about blocking and filtration so much. There's a hybrid category in the middle. And then on the other extreme end, we have masks that are purely fabric masks that are all about blocking. Now, fortunately, there is a published standard for the fabric mask, so we can compare masks against it. It calls for a moisture wicking inside, a repellent outside, and in the middle, some kind of a fabric. Now, there's any number of fabrics that could meet criteria as far as the World Health Organization is concerned. For my channel, uh, I have limited my search to products that have in the middle layer polypropylene, polyethylene, some kind of a non-woven those fabrics just perform so far above and beyond anything else that you can put in that middle layer, so why not? So the DNA masks do have a moisture repellent outside, and we're going to find out. They claim to. Uh, they have a moisture wicking inside, and then they have a trilaminate middle layer, which means that it's actually three layers itself of polypropylene. So it's both spun bound and melt blown, uh, and it's just kind of a super polypropylene on the middle in there. They retail for $17.99 each, shipping and handling with $7.23. I don't know where they came up with these numbers. They seem a little bit random. I don't think there is an option for expedited shipping, but I waited five days. So I ordered on day one. The next day I got an email saying that it shipped and four days later I had the product. They come in a couple of different styles. So this one has the ties that are more like surgical masks that I've been wearing for years in the operating room. And then the other one has the ear loops, but the ear loop masks also have this strap that goes around the head. Now, I really like something like this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it has been studied and shown that the masks with the head straps are actually fitted better and do a better job of filtration and less leak than masks with ear loops alone. Even though you can adjust most ear loops these days, it seems that you know, you're only pulling in one direction. So the head strap is really king. But not everybody wants to wear a head strap all the time, so instead of having two, this gives you the opportunity to just have one behind your head. The other thing that is nice about this is I find ear loops get kind of fatiguing. If I wear them for too long, it seems like very few masks don't kind of get me sore back here after a while, right? So I, I just find that my ears get a little bit sore from having uh, that mask pulling against them all day long. So uh, we're going to give this a try. I think this is uh, I think this is a really nice plus that they included this in their mask design with the ear loops. Now they do have different sizes. I think they have a size for young children and then junior size and then the adults. Most The ones that I saw are like one size fits most adults. So I got the adult size. They do suggest that for teens and for very petite women to order the kids medium. Now I ordered the adult size in each one of these masks. So we're gonna see how they fit. Now, as far as cleaning instructions are concerned, they say that you can wash this in the machine on hot. I don't ever do that with a mask, but you can with this. And for people in healthcare, you can actually autoclave this at 270 degrees up to 15 minutes uh, without impairing its filter. Now, they say as far as machine washing it that the filter had been tested after 10 washes, and they know that at 10 washes, it was still working as it should. Now, they can't guarantee multiple washes at some point you have to just like with any fabric mask sort of explore the integrity of it i think one thing i would do is take a look and make sure that it's still water resistant on the outside because that gives you a sense of whether that water repellent fabric is breaking down in which case i wouldn't want to use it anymore i am taking a leap of faith here but i am thinking that this product is would last well past that 10 washes 
Now they don't say the 10 washes is a limit. That's just the outer limit of where they tested it. My sense tells me that washing this in cold water on delicate would probably do more in terms of extending the life of that filter whenever it is going to become compromised. I personally prefer to do that. I'm using the soap. I think it's really the detergent and the agitation that is so harmful to viruses and bacteria. So the DNA mask does have an FDA approval for EUA, which is emergency use authorization, which means that it can be used at least during this pandemic uh, until the EUA is no longer pertinent uh, by healthcare workers in healthcare settings. So I thought that really says a lot about this product and how it tested. So I just wanna talk a little bit about the filtration with this mask, namely that middle layer of polypropylene. And then I'll try it on for you. We'll do a little water testing with it. I'll do the goggles test the match test, and then at the end, I'll tell you my thoughts on this mask. Now, in terms of its filter, they do say on their website that they have compared it against an N95. Those of you who've been watching me for a while know that I take a little bit of issue with that. Uh, an N95 is a respirator. A mask and a respirator are two different things. And as I've said before, you don't really find this in the medical literature, but you do find in the engineering literature that the one determinant of how well you get the filtration out of an N95, and that's at a particle size of 0.3 for a 95% efficiency of 0.3 micron particle size and larger, and the factor that determines how well that works more than anything else is actually the fit. So a respirator needs to be sealed. This being a mask is not sealed. So I don't doubt that the, the that middle layer, uh, that polypropylene has been tested, that it can trap and filter particles of that size, but that does completely ignore the fit of the mask. Any mask is going to have some leak. So in my opinion, uh, the smaller the particle size you're aiming to be able to filter with a mask, the more resistance you're creating here, and the more you're actually going to have some leak around the periphery. So the fit is going to become very important. Nobody knows exactly where that sweet spot is, guys, and I'm not saying that I think this is a bad product because I'm pretty impressed with what they put in the middle layer of this product. That said, I don't get too excited about something that says it's able to filter 99% of particle sizes 0.1 microns and larger. That's a tiny little micron size. That's a very ambitious claim. All right, so first I think I'm going to put on the one that's more like a surgical mask because I don't think I've looked at anything like that on this channel with ties. Uh, now, they do say to be careful, this aluminum nose piece on the inside is a very thin aluminum, and pushing it back and forth and back and forth is going to break it. So you don't want to be doing too much of that. That said, it does need to work for a while, at least for the life of the mask, right? So I'm, I'm going to try to keep a close eye on that. So let's see. First, I'm going to conform that. It's a pretty long nose piece. It comes out, I'd say, to the outside of my iris, so that blue part of my eye. So it does give me some leverage. When you're working with a surgical mask, I think the best thing to do is tie the top. And then the bottom. Now, one thing I like about both these masks is they do have the pleats. I recently reviewed the Stilgo mask, and that was, I think, the first one I've looked at that has these this pleating design, except for a disposable mask. And, you know, that really allows you to get a little bit of leverage and expansion without taking away from the height. You know, where do you want it up here on the nose? So I'm going to get a, try to get this conformed really well. So I do see it sucking in and out a bit. Again, I think that's always a good sign. Some people just don't like it. If you're claustrophobic, that's the issue with a mask. But that is a good sign that a lot of the air, I, it's never gonna be all of the air that I take in and let out that goes through this filter. It's just not because there's just places for leak with any mask. But when I see that pulling in in response to my very deep breath, it tells me I am pulling a lot of what I breathe in through this filter, which is exactly what I want. Now when I sit and breathe normally, I see minimal movement. So that's good. All right, so let's take a look at safety glasses. And guys, I'm surprised. I see a little bit of fogging here. It's not bad. Um, I would definitely wear this. This is at least comparable to what I have when I'm in an operating room. 
And it's a lot better than I expected, given the fact that it has the elastic under the chin. Uh, I think the only other mask that I reviewed that had this elastic tight fit under the chin was the Living Guard. And what I found with that particular mask is the tight fit under the chin forced more leak up here, and it gave me a lot more fogging. And for whatever reason, that isn't happening with this one. There's probably a little more leak coming around the sides, if anything. But I have to say, I think that for a mask with this kind of tight, ambitious filter, this is a minimal leak. So a little bit of fogging, but really pretty impressive. All right, so let's try the match test. So I've got an AC duct right there, and it's blowing at this moment. Let me let it get started. Yeah, good. All right, and let's do the water test. Get this in a spot where you can see it. Let's see, I'm trying to get a smooth spot. Yeah, it's not sinking into the fabric. That's good, but I'm trying to get a spot where I can show it to you. You see that? It is running down. Now it's interesting, it doesn't beat up and roll all the way off. So some of the other ones I've shown with the moisture resistant outside, the drop actually lands down here on my surface. This one doesn't do that. So it's maybe not quite as repellent as some of the other ones we've seen because I'm not making a mess down below. On the other hand, it does roll and this is just minimally damp. So it does seem pretty water repellent. It's not completely waterproof. Yeah, I can't get that to completely roll, fall off. Okay, so the inside, which I've already got my makeup all over. Let's see. That sinks right in. Maybe it doesn't. It does if I give it a little help, so that's good. And let me just go back to the other side and see if in the front, if I push like I did, give it a little help, does it sink in? No, not really. All right, so I think the outside is water resistant as it claims. It's not quite as waterproof as some of these others where I've shown that the drop just rolls off. I, I can't seem to get it to quite do that. It, it leaves this area a little bit damp, but it doesn't sink in. All right, so let's go on to the mask that has the ear loop design with the head strap. So uh, it also has this elastic for a better fit underneath the chin. I'm going to put that on and pretend I don't have the ear loops first and just position that strap where I'm going to want it and then the ear loops. And honestly, already, already this is nicer than any other ear loop mask uh, because I just don't feel that it's not, they're not really tight around the back of my ears. Okay, the real fit comes from this band. And there's only one of them, which is nice. So it has, seems to have a tiny bit of a different contour. It sort of comes up out here. Uh, the nose piece is a little bit wider, so it's almost out to the outside corner of my eyes. I can't quite get it around my cheekbone for some contour. That's always like a nice thing in the plus column. It's not necessary. And with this one, the chin feels like it fits me a little bit better than the previous one with this style. So. I see a little less movement in terms of the sucking in and sucking out. I don't feel a lot of leak. I and mean, when I exhale really forcibly, I feel a little bit up here near the eyes. Uh, again, it's a mask. It's not a respirator. There is going to be some leak. Let's see how this one does. See how it performs with the safety goggles.
I'd say this one fits better uh, and works better with the safety goggles than the tie design. I think that this being elastic as opposed to a tie where you have with a tie you have to get it exactly right, right? With the elastic, it's there's kind of an infinite settings of how tight or how loose. I see the slightest bit of fogging, but I don't think I would notice it if I weren't looking for it. Yeah, I think this is really quite good. Uh, again, especially impressed because the last time I tried on a mask that had the elastic underneath, it really forced a lot of leak up to the top and it made the safety goggles just impossible. And I thought I had sworn off masks that have this uh, elastic underneath the chin. And I think this one is just a really nice design. I said in the Stogo review that I think one of the nice things about these pleats, first of all, I've read that it does a better job at trapping respiratory droplets so you have less escaping. I don't know if that's true. I read it one time in one article a while back. But I really like that it gives you some ability to adjust the height uh, and get a little more length out of it without compromising where you want the top to be to an extent. All right, so I don't think we're going to find anything a whole lot different here. Again, it doesn't exactly sink in, kind of falls off, and then it's a little bit damp here. My guess is that evaporates. Okay, so it's sort of in between. It's certainly not waterproof. It does seem to be water repellent, water resistant. Now that one fell right off. You know, but it's not thirsty or anything where it's wicking like it should be here on the inside. So we're going to check that out right now. Yeah, and of course that wicks in. So that's good. That's exactly what we want. So I think what I'll do is that crude water test because just the fact that we have maybe a little less water repellents than I've seen in some other masks that claim to have a repellent outside. Uh, let's see how that trilaminate layer of polypropylene is working in terms of slowing uh, any moisture coming through. So there's three full droppers full of water. I do see them soaked into that whoops they didn't quite soak in some of it fell off which is good and the outside is completely dry completely dry let's try it with this one these strings are long if i were to use this mask regularly i think i will trim the strings i think i'll only do two of these because it does seem to be quite moisture resistant, that polypropylene. So I do see this soaking in, but it's soaking in slowly, and there's still a puddle of some of that water, which I don't want to spill all over my surface here. And the other side of the mask is completely dry. So I think that's really impressive. So I'll just give you my thoughts about the DNA mask. I really do like this product. So. Let me start with the filtration because I would be remiss if I didn't start with the one thing that I'm, of which I'm a little bit skeptical. Again, I have said before in my channel that I'm not crazy about the notion of comparing masks to respirators. So I have no doubt that the polypropylene in here will trap uh, the particle size that they say it will, the percentage or the time that they say it will, but how it works in the real world, what's it's on your face, given that it is not a respirator, it's not subject to a fit test, there's just gonna be a whole lot of variation in terms of how much leak there is from one person to another. In my opinion, it's a little bit better not to put all my stock in that. That said, I think that it is contoured in a way that there is minimal leaking. I think we saw that with the goggles test, especially given the fact that it has the uh, puckered fit down underneath the chin. Typically, I would expect that to force more leak up to the top, but that would be evidenced in a lot more fog in my safety goggles. So I think as masks go, this is actually an excellent fit. Now, there just is a trade-off be between the particle size that you're trying to filter and the degree of leak you're going to be forcing around the periphery of any masks. So nobody knows where that sweet spot is, but for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, I did a video a while back discussing uh, the issue of claims of various filters. I'm going to link that right here. Uh, but that said, I think that this is about as good as it can get from what I can see in just the crude testing that we've done here. Now, I like that it allows you to wash it in hot water. So they say that up to 10 washes, and they've tested it at that point and found that there's no compromise of the filter. But at some point, there probably will be. Of course, they can't guarantee indefinite numbers of washes. So 
you know, to my mind, it's really more about the agitation and the detergent when you wash this thing. I probably wouldn't have just one if I planned to make this my go-to mask. I would buy a few of them, and then I would just wash like I normally do in cold water on the delicate cycle with a mild detergent because it's really the emulsification of the mild detergent that disrupts the, the uh, bilayers of bacterial membranes and the outer layer of any virus. And I don't think I would subject it to that really harsh hot washing, and I would therefore hope that I could keep it for a while. There's no way to know exactly how long it's good for when you're dealing with a plain old fabric mask. So what I would do is lean on some of these crude tests, like flick a few drops of water onto this outer surface. Again, we saw that they don't completely bead and roll off, but they do seem to slide a bit. They don't just generally sink in. The other thing you can do is the more crude water test that I did, which was very impressive with this mask, because even with the polypropylene centers, I don't tend to see that much blockage. And I think that's partly a function probably completely a function of the fact that they're using a trilaminate polypropylene, which has the melt blown and the spun bound. And I put several droppers full on um, in the inside of this mask, and that was several minutes ago, and the outside is still not wet. So I think that if you can look at that, that could give you a great deal of comfort in terms of how long this mask is good for. And I'm going to try to remember to do that. I'm going to tally up the number of washes and see for how long I can do that water test successfully. The only thing I might like to see is that the next time they happen to do a redesign, if I were to see this outer layer acting a little more waterproof so that there was just no question about it, that everything just rolled up and fell right off. And then in addition to that, again, I would caution with the uh, comparison between an N95 and a mask, a respirator and a mask being apples and oranges. So I just want to congratulate my colleague, the nurse anesthetist, who I see in the marketing videos. I assume she is the designer of this product, and I think that you have really outdone yourself. I'm really glad that I had a chance to try it out, and I'm going to see how it wears. So let me know if that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any other uh, questions, comments, feedback, anybody that's had any experience with this particular product, good or bad. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.